I'm in the corridor of what appears to be a typical Iraqi home, but things are not as they appear. The U.S. military tells us that this is a former Ba'ath Party headquarters, and behind these doors, they believe, was a torture chamber. The chamber is made of concrete. It's not more than 700 square feet in size, and there's very little natural light. Walking in here made me think of a medieval dungeon. Dark, dirty, hidden, and as I would learn, potentially deadly. You're basically treated like an animal if you're in here, at the very least. Master Sergeant Greg Carroll of the United States Marine Corps discovered the torture chamber with his elite team. They believe it was run by Saddam Hussein's bath party. As U.S. forces first drove into this area, they saw smoke coming from the building. Whoever owned this building or operated out of it at the time that the Marines were coming through Nazaria set fire to this to cover up or hide or, or destroy something. Folders filled with passports and other documents fueled the flames, but there is evidence whoever set the fire was trying to hide much more. We were shown three tiny holding cells, only four feet by four feet wide. Solid steel doors built to lock away whoever was unfortunate enough to be put inside. But the most disturbing part of our tour came when we were shown this, a car battery with wires attached. The U.S. military says the battery may have been used as a weapon of torture, a horrific device that could cause extreme pain or death during barbaric interrogations. Electric shock, something of the, along those lines, but that's the only cell that we found anything like that in. It's difficult to imagine exactly what may have happened in here, but anyone who would have been destined for the torture chamber is surely grateful it has now been destroyed. And joining us now from Baghdad is reporter Paul Boyd. Paul, give us an update, please, on the security situation there. Well, Deborah, security is improving every day. Day by day, the U.S. military continues to work with local Iraqi forces and also the emerging Iraqi military that they're trying to train and make sure that things are as safe as possible. On a personal level, you know, just when I start to feel comfortable, I hear another explosion. That said, as you can see, I'm not wearing a flak jacket. I generally feel safe, and I think most people are continuing to feel a little bit better about the security situation here. I know when you were out and about, you ran across a demonstration today in Baghdad. What were the people protesting for? The people there were protesting their fear that America is moving into Occupy Iraq. A lot of angry people, a lot of loud voices, but definitely nothing violent. And overall, they still appreciate what America is doing. And is day-to-day -day business life starting to come back to some sort of normalcy? Slowly but surely, we're seeing things are getting back to normal in some of the surrounding areas within Baghdad. But right here in the city, it's still very, very quiet. There are rumors that uh, the main market downtown here will get up and running tomorrow. Uh, but it's a slow process, as you can appreciate. And what about any rumors on the search for Saddam Hussein? The rumors continue to swirl, but we do know that the Pentagon is putting out a cash reward, upwards of $200,000 for information leading to someone within the higher regime. And they're also hoping that people will come forward with information on weapons of mass destruction. This is a new initiative being announced today out of the Pentagon. We'll see if it turns up any leads, Deborah. Smashing through windows. Firing 21st century weaponry. Get down, get down, get down! It's get part of the down, intense down, training for the Navy down, SEALs who down, took out bin Laden. I wanted to find okay. out, can a woman keep up with America's supermen? I'm firing with a 50 cal, the same type of weapon used to take out terrorists. Wow! Each year, about a thousand guys try out for the Navy SEALs, but only 20% make it. There are no women in the SEALs. Let's go, let's go! I'm being trained by former Navy SEALs Don Shipley and Lilo Roberti at the Extreme SEAL Experience outside Norfolk, Virginia. At dawn, I climb into the back of a truck and we drive to a remote site where I'll go through the same tactical training used by SEAL Team 6 when they raided bin Laden's compound. We're en route to start the first leg of my Navy SEAL training. I'm told it's very intense. We pull up to an old abandoned house where I put on a bulletproof vest, a helmet, and over 60 pounds You're of ready. combat gear. Then I jump into a helicopter and we fly at 120 miles an hour to simulate a Navy SEAL raid on the house. Oh! 
explosives blast open the front door. Then we rush in to take out a terrorist. Here's another way to open a door, using a 12-gauge shotgun and a swift kick. I'm also shown how to infiltrate an enemy building with a hook and a rope ladder. It's heel toe, heel toe, okay? Then I climb to the second floor window. Trust me, it's not as easy as it looks. Good. The next maneuver is learning how to get back down. Right now I'm getting ready to rappel off a building and into a glass window. I've got on all my protective gear, my helmet, gloves, I have on my goggles. I feel like Spider-Man as I use a rope to walk down the side of the building. Strapped to my helmet is a camera to show you what it looks like from my point of view. But the big test is yet to come. Believe it or not, I'm about to crash through the glass feet first. And this isn't some fake glass, that's the real stuff. Here's how it looks on my helmet cam. That is hard to break through. Tough for me, but not for this special breed of warriors. I now have a new, deeper appreciation for my heroes, the Navy SEALs. Bust them, bust them, bust them. What does it take to be a Navy SEAL like the heroes who took out Bin Laden? Get your face in the mud. I found out today during the most grueling day of my life. Push up, ah. ready, begin. When I was pushed to the limit Paul, and beyond. Get up, Paul, get up. Paul. Get up. My instructors are former Navy SEALs who run the Extreme SEAL Experience outside Norfolk, Virginia, home base for the elite of the elite SEAL Team 6. Good morning. My training started at the crack of dawn, 5 a.m. I met Chief Instructor Don Shipley, and he immediately ordered me to drop and give him 10 push-ups. Drop. Push-ups? Drop. No walking here, SEALs run wherever they go. I quickly changed into boots and camouflage fatigues. Here we go. Then came punishing exercises that were only a warm up for the brutal day ahead. Jumping jacks. One, two, three, one. Leg lifts. Four. I want two. Crawling on my belly. He looks like a flounder, guys. Way too much time in New York City. I had camouflage paint applied to my face. Every part of my body needs to become invisible, like this. The ability to operate undetected is a crucial element in the transformation into a Navy SEAL. Next there comes weapons training from instructor Lila Roberti. He showed me the primary weapon for a Navy SEAL, the M4 carbine assault rifle. It's a 100% chance that this is the weapon that killed Osama bin Laden. SEALs are proficient with all kinds of weapons. I was taught the double tap technique used to kill bin Laden. Two quick kill shots with a pistol. There you go. Then came the biggest test of all. Whoa. As the chopper zoomed into position over a river, I had to jump 25 feet into the water. My heart was pounding. Bust him, bust him, bust him. Still wearing boots, I could barely move my legs as I swam through the freezing water, and dry land never looked so sweet. Cold and dripping wet, and my training was far from over. One, down. This is how a Navy SEAL tests his limits. More pain, more exercises. I felt like I was drowning as I was hosed down while rolling in the mud. Then it was back into the water. And more running until my legs felt like rubber. Get up, Paul! Get up, Paul! Finally, just when I thought it would never end, training was over for the day. What a day, man. What a day. Good job. Thank you. Congratulations. And after an experience like this, you have even more appreciation for these American heroes, the Navy SEALs.